Hi, everyone. My name is Samuel Dawson. and I'd like to welcome you to the introduction episode of the Black Real Estate Dialogue podcast. I currently live in the LA area, specifically Inglewood, and I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Been in California for three years. And the purpose of the Black Real Estate Dialogue is to document the journey of an up and coming Black real estate investor and also to share the stories of successful Black real estate investors. The up and coming real estate investor is me and I'll be sharing great stories of others who I aspire to be like and who I look up to. My goal is to prove that anyone can become a real estate investor. There are so many people in the black community who are achieving great success in this arena. Many have already achieved financial freedom and others are actively working towards it. And black homeownership is at a historical low. That's just a fact. But I believe that with the right information, we can all change that statistic that statistic in years to come. If this podcast can inspire one person to believe that it can be done, then I've achieved my goal. Uh, I've also decided to launch this podcast on Columbus Day for a couple of reasons. One, I came up with this idea in the, during the summertime, so I figured I'd give myself some lead time to figure things out and get things rolling. And also because I don't believe Christopher Columbus was a hero. For most of us in school, we were told that he was the man who discovered North America and did all these great things, which isn't really true. Uh, He enslaved people in the lands he set foot on, and because of him, a lot of people died. Uh, So for me, it's symbolic. My goal is to share something positive on what can otherwise be, feel like a day that can bring negative feelings about history. One other thing I want to mention as a reason for uh, the podcast is this year I learned about racially restrictive covenants. And the definition of that, racially restrictive covenants refer to contractual agreements that that prohibit the purchase, lease, or occupation of a piece of property by a particular group of people, usually African-Americans. Basically, this means that there was a period of time where it was legal to not sell a home to a Black person. And I attended an event in the LA area in Culver City. It was called, I believe, Uncovering the History of Culver City or the Hidden History of Culver City, something like that. And I saw people who discovered that the deeds to their homes included racially restrictive covenants. They're not enforceable, but you know, I think it was a white woman who she just couldn't believe it. She didn't know something like that existed. And so yeah, it was a great moment. There was black, white, brown, everybody, everybody there just sharing that moment and kind of talking about the realities of what things were like back back in those days. And so it's not enforceable across the country, but stuff like that can make you think about how much wealth could have been passed down in the black community. Um, but, you know, we can't focus on the past. We can, we can change, we can change starting today. So I'm closing on my first investment property in Dayton, Ohio, on October 15th. I didn't plan for it to align with the podcast, but that's that's just how the timing worked out. The purchase price was 90K and I put down 20%. The cash flow, which means money left over after expenses, so property management, insurance, tax, and so forth, will be maybe 300 a month or so, uh, conservatively, single family home, and I purchased it from what's called a turnkey provider. So we'll talk more about that in a bit, about what exactly that is. And as far as a down payment, you're probably wondering, well, how did you save up that money for the down payment? So about a year ago, I decided to put my student loans into forbearance to save for an investment property. And my goal was to buy by Thanksgiving of this year, 2019. Forbearance, what that means is it pauses your student loans for a certain period of time. So for my particular loan, I was allowed to do it for a period of 12 months. So 12 months, you don't pay any loans. The interest still accrues, but I calculated it. And to be honest, I've been paying pretty aggressively for about five years. And the interest, whatever interest would accrue was nothing, is is not, not even worth mentioning. Um, that's not professional advice. That's just, what I, that's just what I decided to do. And so I set a goal, like I said, of buying an investment property by Thanksgiving of 2019. At that point, I had no idea what would happen or how that would happen. I just knew I wanted to do it. 
So one of my friends introduced me to Bigger Pockets and sent me a webinar. Shout out to Junior, my boy back in Brooklyn. And from there, I just started reading various forums on Bigger Pockets for beginners to learn what I should do and, and where I should start. And I read their Bigger Pockets has their podcast, of course, but they also have a free beginner beginner real estate investment book, which helped me a lot. And I also started to compile a lot of articles in a Google Doc and just immerse myself and learn as much as I could because I'm coming from a place of not knowing anything. Um, so out of everything I read, what resonated most with me was turnkey investing. And turnkey companies buy distressed properties, they renovate them, and they sell them to investors. The pro of this method is that the home is fully renovated, it's ready to go. These companies, these companies are also vertically integrated, which means that they have property management in place, everything is in-house. And so for me, just being a novice, being somebody brand new, I'm like, you know what? This seems pretty straightforward. It seems like a safer route. That's that's what I'm going to do. So I kind of set my, my my mind on working with a turnkey provider of some sort, learning more about that method specifically, and then just taking it from there. Uh, and so for me, like I said, it, it, it would it would give me an opportunity to learn, minimize the risk. I personally don't think it's scalable because the startup costs can be a lot. Um, it's a good well, relatively, but it's it, it's a good option for a new long distance investor. I live in LA, a very expensive market. Not saying it's impossible to buy out here, but investment property wise, you probably may not have that much cash flow. Um, but yeah, turnkeys, the, the cash flow isn't so lucrative. So I don't think it's it will take a long time to scale in that model. After this deal closes, I plan to search for deals with more cash flow. Um four or five hundred and up so perhaps cash purchases we'll see um but cheaper cheaper purchase prices i need a bit of work get my boots on the ground and, and just take it from there um and so on my next deal i, I plan to cut out the middleman but the middleman is helping me a lot right now um they really hold your hand through the process and so for me i'm in it for the education this time around so next time i know exactly what to do uh, and it's been great you know i call the lender and email all the time I've been doing that the last couple of weeks since we got it under contract, the inspector, like all the stakeholders who are involved. I'm asking them questions every day. There's things in a contract or in a document I don't understand because in this process, I didn't anticipate all the paperwork, but I question everything. I just ask about everything and they've all been, they've been willing to help. They've been good. So for me, I'm like, you know what? This is my education that I'm paying for, if you will. And it, it, you know, after this, it's, it's, it's just moving on up. Uh, and so a couple of the downsides of buying a turnkey rental is that you buy it at market rate. And so you don't get into, you don't get to participate in what's called the forced appreciation. So let's say for example, and I'll, I'll explain forced appreciation more. So let's say the turnkey provider purchases the home for, I don't know, $30,000 and they put Let's say they put, just for the sake of the example, they put $30,000 into renovations and they sell it to somebody for 90. They're making quite a bit of money off of that and they get to enjoy the fact that the property, that the property value increased. Whereas when it comes to me, I'm buying it at market rate. Now, like I said, there does, it does come with some benefits. There's tenants in place within about a month. There's, um, property management, they hold your hand through every single part of the process. So for me, it's worth it for my first deal. I can't make that, I can't make that, I can't make that decision for you. It really depends on what your situation is, but that's what I determined would be good for my first deal. And then after that, you know, I kind of do, do my own thing. Um, but it's important to understand the pros and cons of every strategy. As we go through these podcasts and interview all these amazing people, you'll see that people depending on where they live, depending on what their goals are, they have different strategies, different methods. None of them are wrong. It just depends on what you want, what your goals are, what you're comfortable with. And we'll learn more as, as you hear all the interviews we have coming up. And so on Bigger Pockets, I stumbled upon posts from a woman named Ali Boom. She's actually based in LA, I believe in Venice, and she invests out of state, all turnkeys. And so 
I personally consider her a mentor. I followed up with her via email and she sent me some information and, and resources so I can learn more. Her website is actually pretty helpful. Her and the folks over at Hipster, Invest, Hipster Investments, they have a lot of great resources, calculators, all types of stuff that's helped me quite a lot. And I'm also in her Facebook group where we just talk about turnkeys and answer questions. She has like a live, she does it every week. Uh, so it's good, it's good. I also learned a lot from a, a gentleman by the name of Lane Kawaoka on Bigger Pockets and also on his podcast. I kind of just reached out to him and he recommended me to his podcast. He said, listen to the first 15 episodes, schedule a call with me, we'll talk some more. So I did that during the spring and you know we, we kind of developed a, a bit of a, of a relationship. We had a, we had a quick call and he had a meetup on a flyover in LA and, you know, it was just good connecting with him, but he's, he was helpful and his website, simple passive cash for cashflow.com was very helpful. Now he's now like a big syndicator. So he's doing like huge deals, but you know, he started with turnkey rentals. And so early this year, I read rich dad, poor dad for the first time. And it really, ignited a fire in me to figure out how I can make sure I get a property this year. And so I did something I never would have otherwise done. And I called my retirement plan representative and asked about the various options for what I could do with my retirement funds. And what I learned is that I could borrow 50% of my account balance and pay it back to myself, pay it back into the account with interest over a five-year term. And so I realized that I was contributing 7% to my employer plan, even though their match is only 3%. So I crunched the numbers and I noticed that if I decrease my contribution from 7% to the employer match of 3%, the difference will cover the monthly loan payment and my personal cash flow wouldn't be impacted. So what I mean by that is I wouldn't see the effects of it because it was money that I was giving anyway. Um, and so for me, I determined that was a sacrifice, if you will, that I was willing to make, that I was okay with. Again, that is not professional advice. I'm not going to sit here and tell people to withdraw all your retirement or make a, do a loan. It's just another option. It's a form of creative financing. And as we go through this podcast, you'll learn about a lot of people who use creative financing. And so just putting that disclaimer out there, you know, consult professionals, do your own research. But needless to say, I completed the paperwork and I received the funds shortly thereafter. So that was around June. And during the summertime, uh, I, I made some progress on, on, on purchasing. And so turnkey companies work with, mar with what are called marketers. And the marketers basically connect these companies to prospective clients. And so there's a particular marketer whose podcast I listen to. They're very well known on Bigger Pockets. And I just filled out a form to schedule a call during the summer. And so I spoke with one of their, um, I think they call it portfolio managers or, or whatever they're called. Um, but we discussed my goals and my timeline. And he connected me to turnkey providers via email in Dayton, Ohio, and in St. Louis, Missouri. I replied to both. Dayton was who the company who replied. They sent me their inventory and kind of what they're about. They sent me a market report just to learn more about the, the market in day in and things of that nature. And I learned that there are millions and billions of dollars being invested into revitalizing the city. I believe I saw something saying in the last 10 years, $1 billion has been put into down, has been invested into downtown. There's a lot of plans to reinvest in the city, uh, the West side, which is historically African-American and also a bit south in Middletown area, Amazon just built a fulfillment center. And there's just a lot of things happening there. It wasn't a market I ever thought of, but I liked what I heard. And they said, you know, come on out for a market tour. We'll show you our inventory and, and we'll see if it makes sense for us. So I booked a flight, was, went there in July. During the visit, it was really good. We got to see their finished inventory. Uh, so finished inventory. Uh, homes in the middle of rehab and ones that were just gutted, just purchased and gutted and no, we had done it all. It never felt like a sales pitch. I would ask as many questions as I wanted to. Uh, they spent probably eight hours with me just kind of checking things out and, and talking about their process and their company and things of that nature. And we got back to the office. I chose a couple of properties 
that needed to be renovated as my top two. And, you know, for the rest of that weekend, I just drove around the city, kind of got a feel of the neighborhoods and you just see the building. You see, you know, industrial buildings downtown being converted into lofts. You see cranes, you see it, you see the development, you drive around, you see the change, you see blocks changing. So I'm like, you know what? I wouldn't live here because I did just about everything there is to do in Dayton in a couple hours, but this is a good place to invest, in my opinion. You know, people are working, uh, over 50% of the city are renters. You know, empl- unemployment is very low. So for me, it was, it was, it was a go. It was a go. And again, I think it's irrelevant that I, whether or not I would live there. It's just about it's just a matter if the nut it's just a matter if the numbers make sense. And the Midwest generally is is full of good markets that are cheap to get into, have really good cash flow. So you know, Cleveland, Indianapolis, Detroit, and so on. Um, and we'll definitely talk to people who are making moves in some of those cities. And so I plan to buy as much as I can in Dayton. I've read city plans about, like I said, various parts. And that's another tip. If there's a city that you, and this is something I didn't discover till well after I went to Dayton. But if you're interested in investing in a city that you don't live in, or even in your city, look at the city plans. You know, cities always have a plans on their on their websites of what they want to do with the city, where it's gonna, where, the, where, the, where the redevelopment is gonna go, where transit is gonna go. Like even here in LA, you can, it's very easy to access where all the train lines are gonna be, all the new stuff being built out. So perhaps that could help you in your, in your search and could really specify where you wanna invest. And so, you know, for my next deal, potentially, in the, in the on the west side of Dayton, which is historically black, or per, perhaps in the area where I'm at where I'm at now. So where where my home is now is almost like about two and a half miles from downtown Dayton, where a lot of the stuff is happening. I drove by it during the summer. It looked all right. It looked fine, but you know you kind of just get the feel that the area is changing. Um, so I'm excited to share updates on my journey throughout this podcast, the good, bad, and the ugly, and also share the stories of successful real estate investors. Uh, I definitely want to shout out the Todd Millionaire podcast and the Black Wealth Renaissance podcast and and websites and content. I've gotten so much valuable information from those sources. And for me, it's just served, it's served as an inspiration for me. And it's shown me that, you know, I'm thinking differently, but I'm not crazy. Um, So I definitely appreciate uh, the brothers who are involved in that and also Rashawn Scott, who's a co-host on the Todd Millionaire podcast. And so the future's bright, you know, I'm excited. My goal on this podcast is to prove that the average person can be a real estate investor. I'm an average person, I'm not rich. Everyone I spoke to, everyone I'll be interviewing had to start somewhere and they're going towards a bright future for financial freedom. And so, I'm excited. I'm thankful. I thank God for all of you who are listening, whether it's one, two, three, whether it's 100, you know, let's grow, let's learn together and let's have some fun. And so please leave a comment and review as you listen to our podcast. It'll definitely be helpful. You can find me on Instagram at black real estate at black real estate dialogue. Definitely follow, turn your post notifications on. Let me know if you have questions or if you want to talk informally about real estate, I'm always down for a good conversation. I really appreciate it. Uh, Thank you so much for tuning in to this introduction episode. And I'm just excited. I believe everyone will have a lot to gain from all of those who who we interview. So thank you. God bless. I look forward to connecting with all of you.